did you have your conversation about? Oh, it was about Christianity and Islam. And what aspect? Are you Christian yourself? Or? I'm a Christian. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine, fine. Um, no, so basically, what, what we were discussing, uh, whether Jesus was God or not, that, that was really the conversation that was been spoken about. Um, she mentioned a number of verses which are, I would I'll be more than happy to have a discussion with her. Unfortunately, the, the conversation went downhill and we never had a, a, a good, respectable conversation. And really, that was, that was really the, the uplift of the conversation. Wasn't that great? But um, yeah, what I asked her is that show me an evidence in the Bible, the New Testament, where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. I mean, it's, I think it's a simple request. I don't, I don't think it's a, a difficult request, you know. I, 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 if you believe that, great. I mean, you can show me. Maybe, maybe you can shed some light on this issue. But, so which verses did she talk to you about? Uh, she's mentioned John chapter 10 verse 13 where Jesus said I and my father are one <laughs> right? that for me is not really that's not an evidence that's not an evidence in fact it's not even an evidence at all because the verse before that Jesus says in John chapter 10 verse 28 he said my father is greater than all you know so if Jesus say I am my father are what and in another verse Jesus saying I and my father are one then you have a paradox you have a you have a contradiction so the only way to reconcile this is that if Jesus said I and my father are one that means he is one in purpose and not one in essence because okay. um, so but I think the concept of of unity and diversity exists in Islam as well. Like, unity, look, if you, what do you mean? Well, I mean, the Quran is not God, you know? No, of course. But then eternal attributes are being ascribed to the Quran as the eternal existing mother of the book, you know, mother of all books. So, obviously, the Quran is not Allah, but still both have divine attributes, if you so. No, 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 no. First of all, no, no Muslim would ever worship the Quran. I know. Even though, know. even though we say the Quran, and we even as a Christian, you say the Bible is the word of God, but you don't worship the words of, course. of God. Of course, right? You worship the Creator, right? Sure. So even though they might have like the mother of all books, Ummul Kitab. It doesn't mean, okay, Umar Kitab, let's all now start worshipping the Quran. Oh no, of course not. But the eternity of the Quran, I mean, nothing is eternal except for what's divine. So there is a, there's an, an adjective, an Wait, attribute the Quran, to the Quran, the Quran, which is divine. Right, let me just clarify. The Quran itself is not eternal because the Quran itself is a book. Yeah. We believe that the words inside there are eternal because it's the Kalam of Allah, it's the words of the Creator. So we believe His words are eternal because His words are part of His attributes. But that's so, the same in the Gospel, you know, like when Jesus says in the Gospel of John, I am the Word of God. Now, I think it's even a messianic title in, in Islam for Jesus too. Um, right. So, but, but, but that is the same concept. You know, like, I mean, I, I'm sure you've talked to so many Christians that you know that when Christians say we believe that Jesus is the Son of God, it doesn't mean that that we, we think that that um, that Jesus is offspring. When we of say that I am, when, okay, when it says I am the Word of God, it's not the same as saying I am God. You, you know, you can't, you cannot extract the, the, the meaning of I am the words of God. God can create his, God can choose to create how he wills. You know, in the Quran, Allah says, Kun fayakun, be, and it is. God can merely issue a command, and that yeah. being, one second, yeah. that being will come into existence. It's creative power in the word of it, God. It, he creates Precis his word. Precisely. Yeah. But if we contrast that to Jesus himself. Yeah, well, alaikum salam, brother. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Hello. 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 If we contrast that to Jesus himself, nowhere does he claim to be to, to be uh, the, the creator himself. But he says, I'm the word of God and through the word, everything's been created. I mean, that's the, that's the central thesis of the Gospel of John. And I think Muhammad confirmed the Injil, you know, for, for Muslims to, to, be, to be read. Right. So, okay. So basically, 
we believe in, in the Gospels. We believe in what Allah has sent down to his prophets, right? Now, in the Quran, Allah says, وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابِ We've taught him the book, right? In hikmah and the wisdom, in Torah and the Torah, وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ And we made him a prophet to the children of Israel, right? So God has given Jesus the, the, the power of the understanding of the Torah and the Injil and he also made him a prophet to the children of Israel. But the gospel goes beyond. But hold on one second. So when Allah said believe in the Torah, believe in the Injil, he didn't say believe in Mark, believe in Matthew, believe in Luke, believe in John. Why? Because we know that in the book of John, we have severe interpolations. And I'll give you some examples to demonstrate that. And I don't think the, the creator of the heavens and the earth is going to ask us to believe in a book that has been, unfortunately, unfortunately, have interpolations, have corrections. And I'll give you some examples to demonstrate this point. Right. We know that the King James Version is authorized in 1611. Right. Well, but I'm not interested in the King James Version. I'm in, interested in the manuscripts no, 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 no. that are as old as the second century. No, hold on one second. One second. I'm bringing up this point in point because you said that us Muslims should believe in what Allah has revealed, right? Which is the Torah and the Injil, right? Right. How, how, however, right? We have various different gospels today, right? So is Allah asking us to believe? in these 100 different types of gospels and interpretations no but i think i think christians have when it comes to the gospels a different understanding as muslims with the quran i think muslims when they look at the quran they believe in verbal inspiration so it's it's something that god has sent down for the prophet muhammad and it's one-on-one -on -one the word of god so every every letter matters and i think what we christians understand like the way we understand inspiration right. is that the power is in the authenticity of the reports about Jesus and what Jesus revealed from God. But so if, it's similar, like you know, like if a Muslim reads his Quran in, in English or in, in, in Turkish. So whenever you translate from one language to another, you have there, there's already an interpretation in that. So you would say a Muslim has to read the Quran in Arabic, of course. But then you know as much as I do that many many Muslims around the world that their Arabic is not sufficient. To, to draw everything out of the Quran in Arabic. So they, they go to a transliteration and they, they try to take inspiration out of it. And that's the same with the Gospels. So, of yeah. course, the, the authentic Gospels were written in Greek and Aramaic. But then, when I read a Gospel in English, I can always go back to those original okay. Gospels. Like yeah. you in Arabic. Sorry. Do, like you in Arabic. Yeah. Do you have... The, okay. Let me say this to you, because I, I, I was actually trying to say something earlier to you. Okay, sorry. Um, no, no, it's fine. So, basically, what I was saying, right, is that the King James Version was authorized in 1611, okay. right? And it was based on the Masoretic text, right? You heard of the Masoretic text? Yeah, yeah. Right. The Masoretic text, they were, they were a group, okay, they're called the Maseratis. The Maseratis are a group of scholars that corrected the, the correct in um, uh, mistakes that existed in the New Testament. And I'll give you some examples. We have the first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. It says that there are three that bear record in heaven. And there, the, what? there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This verse has been expunged from the majority of the Texas. You mean John 5, 17? No. What did you say in John 5? What, what verse? The first epistle of John. Oh, in the first epistle, the first of, epistle John. of John. Okay. Chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. It says that there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. This verse did not exist in the earlier manuscripts, right? Which is the Codex Sinaiticus, which dates around the 4th century. Well, you know, there are several so, there are so, several verses in the New Testament. You could also mention Mark 16, 15 to 20. Exactly. You could mention John 8. So, so, but the point is this, even if those stories did not appear anywhere else, those stories or those individual verses, they don't convey any revelation no, that does. you wouldn't be able to reconstruct from all the other it, passages. It does, and, I, and it affects doctrine, and I'll tell you, you what. You say verse John 5? The first epistle of John, chapter 5, verse 7 and 8. 7, okay. Yeah. Right, so do you know the story when Jesus rose from the dead? Yeah, sure. Right? 
and he ascended to heaven. Yeah. That verse has been expunged. In fact, that's actually a primary belief, right, of the Christian faith. That Jesus that went to heaven. Oh, hold on one second. I'm not denying that Christians believe or disbelieve that. What I'm saying is that it's a, it's a key fundamental doctrine that when Jesus died, he rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven. That's actually a key belief. Yeah. However, if we go to the earlier manuscripts, such as the Codex Sinaiticus, right? They did, this verse has been expunged. But it's a whole chapter. It's, a, it's Acts 1. It's a whole chapter in which Jesus, you know, he, it says the disciples received the Holy Spirit. Jesus ascends into heaven. He teaches about the kingdom of God, yeah. um, calls the disciples to wait, and then Pentecost is happening. It's not a verse, it's a whole chapter. Right. Well, are you, are you, okay, are you affirming that a whole chapter is gone? Missing? Oh, no. Look, if you say, look, the, the New Testament is the best documented. Um, work of the of the of ancient times. Right. There's no other. There's over 16,000 founds of the text going back into the second century. Actually, some of them are here in the museum in London. And so, if you say that there are mistakes, that's true. But I want to I want to explain to you. Right. The, hang on. I want to explain you the nature of the, the mistakes. If, like, let's say your wife would write you in the morning a letter and they would say, "I love you." And you would find 10 notes like that. And in every sentence, there would be a mistake. Like in one, the, the I would be missing, and the other one would be the O missing, the E missing, one in the U, the U. So if you find that 10 times, and in each of these versions, there would be one letter missing, you could say each of those documents have a mistake. But if you look at them and you put them next to each other, you, you are absolutely 100% clear about the meaning of the text. And so, yes, you're right, I, I just not all these founds are perfect, but then, what I would like you to do, if you are, if, if you apply that type of criticism to the New Testament, yeah. then I think you should apply the same criticism to the Quran. Okay. And, First and, of all, and that's what I critique about Islam. Hold on one second. The, 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 hang on one second. Yeah. What I critique about Islam is that the discipline of text criticism is not permitted in Islam. Okay. First of all, right, Allah says in the Quran, if this book came from other than Him, truly within it, you shall find many discrepancies. Now, say that again, please. In the Quran, Allah says, if this book, the Quran, yeah, meaning yeah. the Quran, came from other than the Creator Himself, yeah. truly within it, you shall find many yeah. discrepancies. Now, I want to draw. I want to draw back some of the points you've raised. So, if I had ten letters, right, that says, "I love you," and another one says, "I love you," and another one says, "I love you," and then. I don't know, the L is missing from one of them, and the O is missing from one of them, and the U or the V is missing from one of yeah. them. And you was to com you was to compare them together, right? Yeah. What, what's the, if you, you'll see it, that there are discrepancies. No. You will, no, hold on, no. one second, one second, hold on. I, I want to finish yeah. developing sure. my argument, right? What I'm saying to you, I don't think that the example you gave is fair, because we are talking about whole entire chapters missing. And for example, um, the Which book, in the book, uh, uh, Mark 16 is one of them. Yeah. For example, it says that these are the signs that shall uh, follow those those who believe. In my name, they shall what cast out devils. They shall speak different tongues. And if they take out any deadly serpent, no harm. Will, if sorry, if they drink any deadly uh, substance, nothing can. Yeah. Nothing. No harm will come yeah. to these individuals. Right. So, if you have a glass of water and it has one or two percent urine inside of it right it is classed as impure right okay. it's impure yeah so now if we have evidence right if we have evidence that there is corruption in the text right then you have to prove to me that some of the other verses i would argue that some of the other verses can be also questioned but the original argument I was actually having with the, the, the lady earlier was the divinity of Jesus Christ. Let me so, just answer this. Oh yeah. So, no, can so, you finish? Gonna, you no, no, because finish. It's, no, I think he's changing back to the other topic. But that's what we were just <laughs> no, But look, you if, changed it. Into this. So, but if like if somebody accidentally dropped the Quran here on the lawn, and somebody would rip out a page, and you would find that Quran and take it home because you honor it, you would never, you would never assume that the word of Allah is incomplete or wrong because of the ripped out page. And I think the example that I'm making about the original text, text founds, you know, or the old text founds, that is exactly that. I'm not, that, that, is the, that is the nature of the mistake. And then if you say, for example, 
And that's what my argument earlier when you say, like for example, in Mark 16, not in all manuscripts you would find the last verses. It makes, it makes um, arguments about miracles, for example. But then you go to places like Luke 9 to Luke 10, you go to John 14 where Jesus says, you will do greater works than I do. And you, you see the content of the revelation. So do you believe that? So, so do, you, do, you, do, you, do you admit that that verse is a mistake and it shouldn't have been there? Which verse? Mark 16. No. I, I, you know, like there's so many textual bounds where it's in, you know, but it's debated. But it doesn't take away anything from me okay. from the Bible because so, so, so are it you, is mirrored so in the other able, passages. Okay, so let's question it logically. Yeah. Are you able to drink any deadly poisonous substance and no harm will come to you? I don't think that God would want me to do that intentionally, but I think he has the power to protect me if I okay, would drink so, that accidentally. So right. for example, in the book of Acts, the Apostle Paul... He, he so if, 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 I, if I had cyanide, if I had cyanide right, on yeah. me, right now, yeah. because yeah. the verse says, these are the signs that shall follow them. These are the signs. Yeah. So you, I, 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 I take in good faith yeah. that you are a Christian, yeah. right? And you are a believer. Yeah. And so therefore, the criteria is that for you to be a true believer in Christ, right? You should be able to do these things and no harm shall come to you. This is the litmus test. The litmus test no. is, uh, oh, sorry, you, you said it's testing God. This is not testing God because the verse unequivocally states that these are the signs that shall follow them. These are the signs that will determine the, the true that you are a true believer in Christ. Okay. So therefore, if I had a, if yeah. I had a bottle of cyanide yeah. and I gave it to you and I said, yeah. "Hey, drink this, man. Yeah. You know, good luck." What would happen to you? I would die. But I think there you this, go. This, listen. So therefore, this, no, no, no. It, listen. We can we can arguably safely say that the verse is a, is a heretical verse. It's, 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 and it's, that's the reason why it's expunged. That's no. the reason why it doesn't Look, exist. You got to look at the letter and you got to look at the spirit of the Lord. For example, I, I Jesus, do. I believe he's the son of God, you don't believe him. So now, in the Gospels, the devil comes to Jesus and tempts him and say, turn these stones into bread. Or he says, jump from the temple and show everyone that you're the son of God, because no harm will come to you. Yeah. And, would, and Jesus realizes that the spirit in which the devil is tempting him is not to glorify God, but to put him in the hands of the Satan. So what I'm saying to you is, if you, if I would go and say, okay, give me the poison, I'll try just to prove to you yeah. the truth of that passage, I don't think that is the spirit in which it is written. The spirit is written in the context of missionaries proclaiming the gospel and harm being done to them. And then, so I would say, if you give me that poison, yeah. And God, naturally I would die. If God chooses to intervene supernaturally, I would not. And I believe he's able to do that. Right. That interpretation yeah. that you've given me, yeah. that, or that explanation rather, yeah. is that in the text? No, but there you go. So what you're doing, so what you're doing is called eisegesis. In, yeah, you're, whereas you're doing the same with the Quran. You have to. No, we no, have to no, exegesis. No, no, no. Hold on. No, no. Yes, we we exegesis the Quran, and we, we don't exegesis the gospel. No, but no, you do eisegesis. The difference is, right, is that you I'm are. I'm not reading it in the text. I'm trying to make sense of the text. You get you. But the verse like, doesn't make any sense. I mean, look, you're you, sending me an example from now, and I'm right. supposed to go back to the inspiration of the Bible and give an argument or give a give a thesis. No. So I'm, I'm you're asking, proposing the eisegesis. No, I'm saying that you are doing eisegesis because the explanation that you put forward doesn't yeah. exist in the text. The verse can, specifically says, these are the signs that shall follow them. Okay. So, so if you are a believer in Christ... Okay, so I argue, so, within, I, I argue within the unity of the text. Here is the gospel who say that the followers of Jesus will experience those signs. We go to the book of Acts. Luke and Acts is a unity, as you might know. And so here's the Apostle Paul. He comes to the island. They were shipwrecked. He picks up wood. There's a snake in the fire, bites him in the hand. The island dwellers conclude he must have done something really bad because the gods of the ocean spared him in the ocean, but now he's surviving, but now they're punishing him. After five minutes, they see the vipers in the fire. He's still alive, and they say, oh, he must be That's serving the, the true God. Test. So that is an example, intrinsic example within the text that is demonstrating what Jesus said to his disciples. Okay. So if you want me to stay within the context, okay. that's the drink that they yeah. poison. No. Say what? That's it's, the test of yeah. yeah, but the point so, is poison. It's not, it's no, not no, 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 hold on one second. Right, so, okay. Yeah, so so might, people survive, might, but poison. Thank you, and I agree with you, because the, the, the verse is very specific. 
You're talking about in the book of Acts where he was bitten and he survived. The verse says that you shall drink something drink. and nothing will happen to you. So I would like you to, I don't, actually I don't want to even test you. I'm, asking no, you please. I'm not <laughs> going to ask, ask you to drink anything okay. poisonous because I think... But it's in the scripture, so you should have a problem with it. And he should have a problem drinking it. Well, or in theory, we are, we there should be, you should that. not have a it's problem in the scripture, in in drinking scripture. something poisonous. Oh, yeah. Because as a true believer, nothing will happen to you. But I asked you, can you drink cyanide? And you said, well, the chances of death is probably like 10 out of 10. You know what I mean? You need a supernatural okay, so, intervention so, right, from can, I, can I ask you, yeah, yeah. if you drink the poison yeah. and you died, I can argue that you're not a true believer That's because correct. you should correct. be able to survive that, That's right correct. or wrong? Well, I would say as long as we're here on this earth, we live in a tension. I'll give you another example. You haven't answered my question. Yeah. Well, so I'm, I'm, I'm answering you. your question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. So, look, there's a, like, let's say there's another tension in the Bible. So there's Jesus and he says that we are able to put our hands on people and they be healed. So I, in my life, I put my hands on thousands of people that were sick because I believe in the healing power of Jesus. And I experienced miraculous where, where people who got really healed in an instant. But I also walked away many times where I prayed for somebody and my heart was broken because somebody was not healed. And so I have to deal with the tension that Jesus said that healing is a part um, of his kingdom that has arrived in this earth. It's not fully developed until Jesus will come back. So I live, as I'm on this earth, I live in that tension of seeing fulfilled what Jesus pro uh, proclaimed and not. And so the same with the so you, So you will be able to go to a hospital right now, right? There's many sick people. There are many sick people in hospitals right now. So you'll be able to put your hand on them and pray for them and they'll be okay, right? And I expect that some people will be healed, yeah. Okay. And I so there are people that are on the verge of dying. But I'm not taking... Outside. Hold on one second. Yeah. There are people in hospitals right now that are dying from outside. outside the, who, who, who's Esau uh, in the Bible? Vascular problems, no, no. Who's Esau in the Bible? And they're on the verge of dying. So you believe who's that if you touch them, they'll be healed, right? My mother who died of cancer and in the early stages when she had cancer, we prayed and we saw that, that cancer tumors disappeared completely. She died eventually, cancer came back, but I I carry inside inside of me the testimony of Jesus really healing a tumor and taking it away. Yes. Okay. Well person okay, well fair enough. If that's happened for you then I respect that. But I'm saying for the majority of Christians who either have attempted to drink any poisonous substance have will probably most likely die right christians who attempt to go to hospital there's so many hospitals around the uk you know we are you've got st mary's down the road you've got um, uh, uh, king's college in camberwell you've got hospitals all over the place you know if christians will be able to go to each hospital and just touch them and they'll be healed i don't think there'll be any need for doctors to help them. I think we both should be more humble because I mean, in how extremely that seems very logical. I mean, you have the same theological problem. You know, Allah promises that He will bless those that fear Him, that He will keep evil from from from, from believers, that that they will that they will have it well in life. And we all know that there are very good. God-fearing Muslims and they go for tragedy and so it's not according to their bad deeds they're actually very good people. No, in the Quran and we so believe that God will test us. Yeah. See the thing is Allah in the Quran yeah. says in Surah Mun, he yeah. says God has created life and death yeah. in order that he may test us. Yeah. So yes, I agree with you. It's, in, it's in the Bible too when, when God tests Job and, it, and, it's, and there's, this, this, there's this conversation between Satan and God and, and, and evil strikes in Job's life and the friends come and they counsel him and they say, what's the wrong that you've committed in your life? And in the end, God speaks and he says, there's no wrong. It was a test, but no, it was not the way to So sometimes in our lives, things happen that are not just, and we still need to fear God and trust him. Look, I agree with you, right? In Islam, we believe that God created life and death that we may be tested. So yes, as a Muslim, yeah. we will go through our trials and we will go so through our we. own personal tribulation. But it's not the same as saying that in Mark 16, where it says, well, you know, if you take something deadly and nothing will happen to you, it's not the same as where the Quran says that we've created life and death in order that we may test you. As Muslims, we believe that going through trials and going through tribulations and going through you know sadness and, and yeah. death is part of the cycle of life but Allah says in the Quran that if we remain patient right that Allah will reward us for our sabirun so Allah says Inna Allah is with the patient one 
right? That's, that's so, intrinsic to Christianity. Suffering is intrinsic to Christianity because we believe in Jesus as the Messiah. And I know, again, you don't believe that. No, we that believe that. No, no, listen. I, 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 again, you, I know you don't believe that Jesus died at the cross. But, but Jesus dying at the cross is the, is the ultimate expression of suffering. And he says people who follow him metaphorically pick up their cross too. So actually Jesus is calling us in a lifestyle of suffering. So we, 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 we like a lot of suffering that we experience in our life. But again, in the same like in Islam, with the promise that the glory that is prepared for us is so much bigger right. than the suffering. Okay, let's discuss that. Right. So, you do you believe in justice? Yeah, in ultimate justice, not always on this earth. Okay, so define justice. I, I, know, it's, I know it's a random question, but define justice. Even if you have to pull up the let's pull up the dictionary definition of justice. Right? justice. I think let's 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 put it short. I don't know if this is a perfect dictionary um, explanation. I would say that God sets a standard and he's going to hold us accountable to that standard and he will be repaid according to what did we deserve if we don't receive grace. So do you believe that we are all responsible for our own actions? Oh yeah. Is it fair, is it fair that I suffer for what you do behind closed doors? Okay, I'll give you an example. You got HSBC down the road, right? You got HSBC, the bank, mm -hmm. right? Let's say I did. Let's say I woke up one morning and I said, you know what? I want to rob the bank this morning. And I went out there and I robbed the bank, right? And I was put before a judge, right? And the judge says, "Sorry, what's your name? I didn't catch your name." Gernot. Gernot. Hamza. 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 Yeah. Hamza, where are you from, actually? Uh, I'm from. I'm from the UK. My my family. Okay. From, yeah. Born and raised. I'm yeah. from Germany. Germany. I wish no. I could speak a few German. I don't know. I can't give you. I know a bit. I can't give <laughs> yeah. you any German words. I can't give okay. you any German words. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. Goodbye. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but going back to your point about yeah. robbing the bank. Right. Okay. So let's say, for instance, that we, I, I decide to rob the bank, and the judge says, "Hey, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to punish you, even though you wasn't there." Even though you had, you had, you wasn't even an accomplice to what I've done, but I'm going to punish you and I'm going to sentence you for 17 years, and I go scotch free. Is that justice? Um, because you remember, you said you believe in ultimate justice. Yeah. So now you have to yeah. really be consistent with your words. Here. Well, the first, is that justice? the first thing that I would say is it is absolutely a fact that people suffer because of the sins of others. Like, I come from a very, very dysfunctional family and I had to suffer a lot under the choices that my mother and my father made. So, I, I'm really innocent when it comes to that, I'm not innocent when it comes to other things, but I suffered as a direct result. So, I think that life is not just when it comes to that. Now to your question. Yes. Um, is it just? I think somebody needs to pay for the sin that has been committed. And I and the person who committed the mistake um, or the robbery is the person that should pay for it. Why should they pay for it? Well, because they committed the crime. But, and that is where the concept of grace enters. And I think that is something... You know, it's there in the Quran. You know, Allah is all merciful. But I think the doctrine of grace, what grace means in essence, it's just a mere concept in Islam, the way I read the Quran. And it's and, and what grace by definition means favor is granted to you, although you deserve otherwise. That's the definition of grace. And so as Christians, we are perfectly aware that the wages of sin are death. So for all the little and big things where I where I'm not able to uphold the perfect law of God, which is which reflects his holy character, yeah. I'm supposed to pay the penalty for it. Right. Actually, in Islam, I, I agree. No, I, well, yeah, but that's yeah. Justice means I pay for the wrongs I've committed. No, justice means you set things right. So yeah, but you none of us right. can. How can we set things right? How can we set things like if you sin again and I, you and I sin against the perfect character of God? How are we going to make things right? Yeah, but the thing is, God is forgiven, correct? On what basis? On the basis that He's forgiven. So, do you believe? Do you well, believe that in repent? Do you believe that you can repent? You can turn to God and repent for your mistakes and repent for your sins, and God will not overlook your mistakes. Correct. 
he will is he, he will, not he will even he will erase my mistakes but I still I still want to I want to take it one step further when God shows mercy to us so his loving and his merciful character paired with perfect justice God needs to find a way how he can be merciful to you and me and still uphold justice. I think if God would say to me, so I steal something, so where and he would just say, oh, okay, come on, never mind. He's, I like him, I predestined him, he's a nice guy, I let him into paradise. So where is the mercy? make paradise not a right. perfect place. Do you have a son? Yeah. Okay. Would you allow your son to die for that man over there for his crimes? No, no but that is why God is so perfect. So hold on one second. See, what it is, what, I, what I'm... It, what I'm extracting from this conversation is as follows is that you are actually saying that you are more just than God and I'll tell you why I believe that right you would not allow your son to die in place of someone else because you know that's unjust right? no because I love him and I wouldn't want my son to die for anyone else absolutely I agree with you 100% yeah. you do not send the person you love to die for someone else's crime because that's not love that's cruelty you know what, God, what, what, you know what Jesus said there's none that has greater love for his friends one second than the one who gives his life for his friends I agree in certain situations that's you, ultimate love and sacrifice hold on one second I agree in certain situations right to let's say for example there was a car that was traveling at 70 miles an hour right and then this brother he was in front of that car and I pushed him out the way and I died in his place right in a situation like that then the verse that you says applies because that is showing sacrifice you're sacrificing your life for the love of others right so however, however yeah it's an intentional death however if we can trust what's going on it's happening. Oh, right. It happens all the time. WrestleMania, mate. <laughs> WrestleMania. We need to get Eddie Hearn in there. That's what, what we need to do. WrestleMania. Wrestle what? No, just like a wrestling event. Really? Like fighting, innit? Yeah, Probably gonna fight kill for a minute. Yeah. Someone's getting chased out. Okay, no one gets involved. Just carry on. We need to get Eddie Hearn in the building. That's anyway. what we need. Eddie Hearn. Anyway. Bit of match. So, as I was saying, right, is that when you love someone, you do not send them to their death, right? The Bible says that God loved that He loved His Son so much, right? John three sixteen. For so God he loved, loved the, world the world that He, so much that he yeah. gave His Son. Right. When you love someone, you don't you do not send them to their demise, right? You protect and you save. Just like in your situation, if you have a son, you will not send him willingly to die for someone else's but for he, someone but, else's iniquity. But Jesus says that nobody has the power to take life from him, but that he voluntarily gave his life. You know, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. So that's suicide. So he committed suicide. Well, I mean, but if you voluntarily gave your... Well, that's the example you just gave. No, he didn't you do that, though. If you jump in front of a car God, in order God, to God. save him, no, then that's not, that's not suicide, no, but, but that's get offering up yourself. The ultimate expression of love. Excuse me. Did, did he say in the Bible, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? So he felt, he felt betrayed in the first place that he was there. Well, you know, Christians would debate, was Jesus really forsaken or did he perceive to be misplaced? No, sake. those were his words. He said, my God, my yeah, God, yeah, why yeah. is thou forsaken That's me? What he's, okay, so I don't, so think, so it's better. I don't think it's okay. clear. But then, then let's take it that way. Let's say God turns his face from... Everything okay? So, so, um, so, so Jesus carries the sin of the world, and sin is what separates. Wait, hold on. When Jesus was, why he cries when out, Jesus why, was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, what was he doing? He was sweating blood. He was praying. He was crying out to God. And what was saying, he praying for? Well, he would in that moment when he knew the crucifixion was about to happen. Yeah. What he said, God, if it's possible for this um, cup to pass me, yes, but your will be done and not mine. So are you saying, sorry, are you saying that the words of the prophets are, the, his prayer, look, Jesus says, when he was about to rise Lazarus from the dead, what was the prayer he said? Yeah. Lazarus, come forth? No, there was a prayer that he issued before he said, come forth. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you aware of the prayer? Is it, is it my, I know that you always hear me, is it that? Yeah, yeah. It, it's in, in right. John 11, right? Right. Yeah, I, I think that you always hear me. He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, Father, yeah. you always hear me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Jesus also said, ask and it shall be given. 
Seek yeah, yeah. and you shall find. Yeah. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Yeah. Right? So Jesus is here saying, right? Whatever you ask, I will grant that to you. Yeah. So why would God, unless Jesus is now lying at this point, and I don't yeah. believe he would, or he is. And I feel that the Muslim narrative is more compatible with what the situation what yeah. happened to Jesus. Because Jesus asked God, he said, God, not by your will, not by my will, but your will be done. Yeah. So Jesus, as a believer in God, he will submit his will to God, he will. However, that was not Jesus' primary uh, goal was to die because he was asking God to be saved and according to Jesus own words he says the father always hears my prayer but so if the father so the Muslim narrative is more consistent with the prayer of Jesus no, but because it's a struggle it's the struggle of every person who fears God I mean you know the will of God for you and then you you realize that in your heart you have a human tendency that you want to do something else than what you know to be right and then you, you would call that jihad of the heart. So you are in this internal struggle, knowing what's right. You want to be obedient to God. You want to fear God. Your, your human side is pulling in another direction. And then you, you, you wrestle in prayer with God to bring your own <laughs> desires under submission under God's will. Deep down in your heart, you want to do the will of God, but on a superficial level, your Hold human on. tendencies will pull What you. is your understanding when Jesus says, Father, you always hear my prayer? What is your understanding of that? I would say what Jesus means with that is, is I'm quite, in the presence, it's clear I'm, to in the presence me. I'm in the presence of God. I know you <laughs> hear me, you hear my heart, you see my desires. Um, you, and then when Jesus, like in John 5, 17, Jesus says, I only do what I see the Father do. So when Jesus acts in this independent in this in this unity with his Father, whatever he will ask for, it will happen. And so he and the Father, they were one in, in unity in the, in the, in the mission right. to save humankind. And the humanness, the human side of Jesus strayed from the suffering So if the, the Son makes a request from the Father, would the Father reject the prayer? Well, you know, because like, according to Jesus himself, he says that the Father always hears his prayers. Musa, Musa right? No, no, say, tell me your name again. Hamza. Hamza. What's yours Hamza, again? Your question, Gernot. Gernot. Your, no, but Hamza, your questions, they're very technical. You know, it's it's always when A then B. But there's this you need a you need a grasp the spirit behind those questions. No, but no, but the thing is, right? I think it's quite clear. Jesus says that Father, you always hear my prayer. So I, my argument is, is that I am being more consistent than I'm. I'm being, I feel that I'm being more consistent than yeah. you because I am. The verse says the Father always hears my prayer. So if Jesus is making a request from the Father not to die yeah. although yes as a believer he will submit his yeah. will to the father by saying but your will be done I accept that however as a believer in God because Jesus yeah. believed in God and he also believed that God always answers his prayer Jesus said ask Matthew chapter 7 yeah. verse 7 he says ask and it shall be given yeah. seek and you shall find but, but so Hamza, if the Jesus intention of Jesus was clear if you look at the book of John 21 chapters you have John 1 to John 12 and that's all the stories of what Jesus said, of, of the miracles he did. And then from starting from John 13 to the end, it's the story of Jesus on the way to Jerusalem, leading up to the crucifixion. And so the intention of Jesus is portrayed in, in 10 chapters leading up to Jerusalem. That's his intention. He knows he's going there. He knows he's going to be crucified. And then there's this one moment in the garden where he struggles with that. So taking that situation, I don't think you can make an argument and say, actually, Jesus just didn't want to go to the But was he willing to sacrifice? Say what? Was he willing to sacrifice? To be sacrificed? Well, you know, like the way I, I would see that is Jesus is very clear about his mission. He's on the way to Jerusalem. He's, he's about to be sacrificed. And then when the final moment comes, the final night, then there is this tremendous struggle. The Bible says, you know, like he sweated blood. He pleaded with God. So I would say it's... It's like you are on a you're on a mission. You're, everything is heading up towards that, and then when the moment comes, there is this moment, you know, like where where the where the task overwhelms you, where the inner struggle is intense, and then he expresses his. I understand the struggle. Okay? I understand the, 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 the dynamics of that side, right? but Jesus is asking to be saved. Now I can understand. No, he's not. He's he even is. saying to he's even saying to his disciples when Peter takes the sword and cuts off the, the ear of the of the servant of the high priest. He says, 
put on your sword because could I not ask my father and he would send a legion of angels right now and deliver me. So Jesus, he also said, nobody's taking my life from me. Jesus stayed, even when he, in his crucifixion, in perfect control. Yeah, but nobody, yeah, but the, the, I don't see the correlation between Peter uh, splitting the ears and the... Because uh, Peter wanted to fight for Jesus. Let me copy. What's, what, what I hear from the Christian, this whole Christian narrative, that Jesus was willing to be sacrificed. If you look at the evidence, Jesus prayed that. As I hear from the Christian narrative, Jesus was willing to be I'm not getting cameras now, sorry, sorry. Well, look, thank you, but thank you. You too, you too, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Now you can say Alvida Sen. How do you say Alvida? Alvida Sen. Alvida Sen. Alvida Sen. Bye bye. It's been Amanda, is that correct? Amanda? I am Amanda. I am Amanda. It's me, Gerna. I'm in Egypt a lot. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You too. You too. Take it, man. Nice to meet you. Yeah, What's your name? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, rasulatu rasulatu rasulillah. It was a pleasure speaking to our brother here. And inshallah, there's a lot of problems and a lot of fights that's happening in the park. So I think it's best for our safety to end this conversation. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you all. Um, my, I have a channel. It's called Hamza's TV Network. Because a lot of brothers have been asking for my channel. Hamza's TV Network. Jazakallah khair. Salam Oh, should I show it? Great discussion. Oh, please. Yeah, alhamdulillah. No, no, you did wrong. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. We'll catch up in Shalom. Good debate. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Hamza's TV Network. I'll try. Oh, I'm not. I'm not getting any. I'm getting, yeah, it's getting. A, I'm getting a lot of. Uh, it's not even working. Anyway, I'm just TV network. Just type that. I'm just TV network. And I think you know what she does. She does hate. And I think, to be fair, what's wrong with them? But one of the, I think, just TV some one of the guys tipped the front of her from not letting it. Exactly. Okay, there's a lot of brothers that are asking me. So here is the information. May Allah reward you all. I mean.